morning, guys. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com and TrierWildernessAcademy.com. Hope you guys are doing well today. I thought I would start off outside here. It is very bright and there's lots of bees. We This year is a really heavy bee year, uh, here in northern Idaho anyway. So in lieu of getting stung, I'm going to end up going inside, plus my phone will overheat. But I wanted to start out here today um, behind me. I don't know if you can see it in the hollow down there. Good morning, Tammy. But in the trees there behind me, you can see smoke lingering in there. And I just wanted to show you the view here. I can't zoom this in and I can't point behind me <laughs> real well with the camera. But right where my hand is there in the mountain, usually you can see the mountain really, really clear. And today we've got, today and yesterday, ooh, the um, smoke has been really hanging. Uh, we've got a lot of local fires going on that are being put out as they're starting. Um, but it's really, really dry. And this is a time of year where it's really, really nerving. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it last week, but we were, the customer that we were visiting when I got stung by a bee, they actually... Uh, had a lightning strike there a couple days before um, we had a storm come through. Good morning, Chad. So it's just that time of year where it's really touch and go. You get an electrical storm right now and it is just everybody cringes because lightning strikes and, and forest fires start. So, um, and I know that uh, poor California has been getting hit so hard. Prayers are going out to all of you in California. Uh, but everybody just be be alert um, in the description below are some wildfire there's a blog post that I wrote with things that you should be aware of and things to think about and also um, uh, the alert um, link where you can find uh, and, and set up a radius around your home and be emailed and notified when there are struggles and things that are close to you good morning Krista I was reading Chad, sorry. <laughs> it's so funny. You guys have to, I just look like I space out. I'm trying to read the screen in the bright sun. Uh, definitely praying for you, Chad. Sorry to hear you're under the weather. You probably got what the kitties had. I hope not. And um, Chad has a lot of uh, smoke in his area too. He's in a valley where it really um, settles in there. Uh, we get to areas and times in our season where the air quality is really really poor so it's just really important that you think of these things there was a year when Austin and I were milking goats and we had wet bandanas around our face just to eliminate some of the exposure I'm gonna take this inside because the bees are getting really crazy so let me take you inside and by the way I'm gonna warn you I, I have a female dog in heat and my other three dogs are absolutely nuts. It is like absolute chaos here. So I just thought I would share that in case things erupt here. And I want to share something with you here. Uh, I'm going to flip this around. Okay. This little baby here is one of my favorites. Um, remember how a couple weeks ago we were talking about how decluttering um, can create creativity? Well... This cabinet I bought, um, oh, send in prayers, Tammy. She said, too, she can hardly see the surrounding mountains. What state are you in, Tammy? I forget. Forgive me. But a couple years back, I bought this cabinet, and we put it in the Mountain Boy's room. I did that as an, in an effort to provide him with a cabinet to keep organized. It has the tin um, all around and I stripped it down. It had old white paint on it, which I believe was milk paint. Good morning, Brenda. And, and good morning, everybody. Um, I stripped it down and got all the paint off, which I believe a lot of it was milk paint. There was a lot of layers. I hid a red layer underneath. Um, but now my creativity is um, wanting me to paint this in a, a cream colored milk paint so I also have to repair the door and um, I'm gonna use this you're gonna love this I, I need counter space like with all of our decluttering and, and rearranging things are just taking up so much space on my counter and I like to have my counters free so 
that is why I am going to start putting um, things like these big pottery dishes that are in the way, out of the way, till I get cabinets and um, till we're settled into the other place. So this is just my kind of catch-all. I'm going to put my uh, cast iron all down here once I get the door repaired because um, our cast iron is in our oven. Uh, we did have it hanging on the wall, but when we put the pantry up, um, it got taken off the wall and there wasn't room for it. It's gonna it was going to go over on the wall um, next to my stove, but it hasn't gotten there yet. So I've got lots of cast iron and it's in my stove, so then I'm taking it out to cook in my stove. So it's a little inconvenient and I like to make things easy. So I know I love old cabinets too. My husband's like, that thing is falling apart. We need to get rid of it. I'm like, are you kidding me? He just doesn't understand. And of course, I understand why, because he's a craftsman and he can make amazing things. So maybe in my future, we'll make something and reuse this tin. I don't know, but I, I get where he's coming from. But at the same time, there's something about the character of an old piece of furniture. And even if it is falling apart or a little rough, it's it's got a story. I don't know. I've always loved antiques. I've always loved old furniture and old things. So... You know, and just a little um, idea for you. My uh, graters are up there. They are on top of a jar lid, like say your pizza jar lid. And I've got a tea light in the inside in there. So at night, I light those. Um, just gives off a neat hue and really love doing that kind of stuff. Um, even in the chaos, you need to make your space, you know, livable and also you know comforting and I want to show you something else this is another old piece that I found years ago when I was on the farm and it can be hung that's how I had it on the farm and that's another piece that I like to light up because at night the dragonflies end up on the wall behind so really just a neat piece so I'm going to spin this back around here Okay, so I just thought I'd share that with you. I figured some of you might appreciate that. Um, but you can make this cabinet beautiful again. Absolutely, absolutely. A little TLC. And there we go. Bear with me. My tripod is falling apart. Very, It's got a very slow death going on here. And hopefully it'll stay in place. Let me get some things out of the way here. Okay, there we go. Now... Um, I love giving new life to old things. I know, me too. Me too. That's the part that my husband doesn't get. But I, like I said, he's a craftsman. Actually, I'm going to show you something after I finally got situated. Um, since you said that and since I mentioned him, let me spin this around again. You see this piece right here? The hope chest, not the dog. <laughs> that was Bowser. Um, and use the hair. We have... In addition to a dog in heat, we have, that's why my vacuum piece is sitting, that's what I'm doing next. Um, we have a Alaskan Malamute who is shedding, and I've never experienced anything in my life like it. I'll actually show you. I vacuumed yesterday. Look at my floor. It's like, I, can, I need a spinning wheel. If I had a spinning wheel, I could start making hats. But my husband made this piece. It is made um, mortise and tenon style, so I'll explain that. Everything's wooden pegged. There we go. Sorry guys. It was spinning and spinning. Okay. I don't know if I get in this corner if my router's giving me issues or what, but it's wooden pegged and that's how it's put together. All the hardware he made himself. So I don't it's not really good. Let me see if I tap on it. Ooh, I don't know what that just did. <laughs> anyway, are you still there? <laughs> He, he made the handles, and on the inside there are locking hinges, and it is just an amazing piece. He made that for me um, when we were on the farm, and absolutely love it. So he will actually be starting up working on furniture again, probably in the winter months this year, so you'll be seeing more of his beautiful work. So as you can see, I see why he feels my piece is a piece of junk, So, but we just discussed that, so... He will see when I'm finished with the cabinet that it's it's still usable. He, you know, and he's one of those that likes to repurpose things, so he'll under hopefully understand. Um, milk paint's cheap, so all right. So how are you guys doing today? Um, share some things with me. Do you guys um, get into uh, redoing things? I know Brenda does. Do the rest of you like to redo furniture or find old things? Uh, go treasure troving in antique and thrift stores. Thanks, Brenda. 
he is an amazing craftsman. As you can see behind me, I mean, he's built this house, and when we start getting the wood in here, it's just going to look amazing. Yeah, I know, exactly, Tammy. I love I love both, you know, and, I, and my house is a mix of both. I mean, you can see his back tags. I'm sure at times you've seen the back tags on the wall. Those are from his bull riding days. I mean, we've got a mix of country and antiques and handcrafted things so we've got quite the the mix <laughs> I know exactly Krista auctions are a lot of fun um, they're not as prevalent out here as they were back back home um, but I there's certain uh, thrift stores and antique stores that I enjoy really enjoy getting into um, and it's nice finding treasures good morning George um, I've showed you guys my uh, cast iron uh, coffee grinder on my wall. What was really cool with that, that was a housewarming gift to ourselves when we moved in. Um, this was all open space. There was nothing studded out other than the exterior walls, no, no interior walls. And we just had the wood stove. And, of course, coffee's a priority. And uh, I found it on eBay. And the person that was selling it had it hung upside down. So I instantly knew they had no clue what they had. And, and I was just totally stoked. I picked it up for 20 bucks when all the others that were listed on eBay were selling for over 120 to 220 So I was like totally stoked with that. So when you find those treasures that people don't realize what they have, um, oh, it's so much fun. I, and I'll tell you another story. I was on my motorcycle one day back home. In Pennsylvania and I was riding and I came across a yard sale and I saw a massive big cast iron kettle I had been looking for one for the mountain man for Christmas and this was in spring and I had I had missed like probably six of them they were around seventy five hundred dollars and every time I'd find them in the paper I'd call and they were um, they were gone and uh, um, I go past this yard sale and I'm like, I saw it and I just spun around on the road up a little further and came back and I started walking over and there were two guys standing there and I'm like, how much are you asking for the kettle? And the guy goes, 45 bucks. I'm like, sold! And I got all excited and you know how I am. Um, so the guy standing next to him says, well, maybe I didn't need it that badly. <laughs> So I was like, so I was so totally flabbergasted. The guy was going to buy it, and because of my excitement, he let me have it. So then I had to race home like a fool because they were packing up to go get my truck so I could bring it home and surprise the mountain man. Krista says, speaking of Glenn, we found a pair of his cowboy boots he gave Seth years ago, so now Garrett is wearing them now. Talk about repurposing. <laughs> Perfect, and handing down. There we go. That's cool. <laughs> But I love doing that kind of stuff, and I love finding treasures. We use that kettle. If you guys follow us, you've probably seen the picture of the mountain man out by the smokehouse using the kettle. Um, our goal or plan is to eventually make chicken noodle soup with some of our chickens in that pot and also uh, apple butter at some point. So once we get settled in, in the new place, we can end up doing so much more. Uh, we'll have so much less on our plates and on our minds, and so... All right, I'll take you out in a little bit. Like I said, my house is liable to erupt here uh, with dogs before they were all howling. I also like to go to the city on trash day just to see what people have set out. You would be amazed at the good stuff people throw away. I totally agree with you, Brenda. This is another funny story. I had been... Um, I, I was going to this one antique shop for the longest time, and the guy mentioned one day that he needed a website. My... Um, profession is uh, creating web designs and programming. So I bartered with him. He had a really cool old mantle that I wanted to repurpose. Again, it was white and I wanted to strip it down. So um, I picked it up with the intention of doing that, went to visit a friend, and on the way home, it was trash day, and a lady had a huge mirror sitting out alongside of the um, street. And it actually was the perfect size. It fit directly behind the mantle. So what I did is I, I attached the mantle to the wall in the farmhouse and I put the mirror behind it and I put a chiminea in front of it with candles burning so it reflected off the mirror. So I instantly saw the mirror and knew exactly what I was going to do with it. So it's just fun. I totally agree with you. We, we have dumpster sites here and it's amazing sometimes what people throw out and what you can find. We've gotten a pressure washer 
that was in perfect condition. It just needed a, a wheel fixed on it. And um, the mountain boy goes nuts when he sees weed whackers and mowers because he likes he's learning how to repair them. So totally get that. Other people's trash is our treasures, right? That's just how it goes. But those are it's a great way to um, repurpose things and also redecorate your home. Um, you guys saw me um, interviewing or uh, introducing you to my friend Val a couple weeks back. And um, she has done the same thing and has found some amazing pieces for next to nothing or free. And um, she's found a lot of patio sets that she pulled out of the trash and just repainted. So there's a lot you can do and there's a lot of ways to repurpose things. So don't ever discredit that. Um, especially when you start decluttering, your mind really gets creative and you can come up with some really awesome ideas. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Um, the other thing that we are going to talk about today is kind of a part two of last week, and that is learning to rest where you are and where in your current circumstances. Um, so whether it be that you're having financial troubles or whether it be that you're sick, my son found mowers and fixed and sold them. Yeah, absolutely. There's a guy in town who I imagine is doing the same thing because he sells every mower for 20 bucks. And it's an old, an old fella. He doesn't live, you know, he lives very frugally. And I'm sure that that is what is providing him a good bit of income because we all know where he's at. So when a mower goes, we just go pick up a new one from him for 20 bucks. So, but um, a lot of us, I mean, we're all going to go through struggles. Um, there's a lot of people um, suffering from autoimmune diseases and chronic illness, which I honestly feel is a byproduct of our food. And some people may disagree with me, but our food is very toxic. And um, I learned that really fast. Um, when I got sick, I, my diet became so limited. As a matter of fact, I am drinking lots of water right now and resetting my system and re, um, uh, just trying to reset my food. Um, with the histamine issues that I'm having, I need to figure out um, and refigure out because I haven't had histamine issues for three years. Uh, again, uh, reacquaint myself with the different foods and just to uh, be more cautious drinking the different teas that I mentioned last week, like your olive leaf tea and your holy basil. Um, also staying away from foods like spinach. Spinach is high in histamine. So learning how to adjust your diet around your physical needs can be really, really huge. Um, can also be um, life altering because you can heal yourself by adjusting your diet and getting rid of the processed foods, the packaged foods, the GMO foods, and eating just a wholesome diet. Um, many of us do do that where we, we are just eating, um, you know, our wild game, our vegetables that we are. Um, growing or getting from uh, good sources and our fruits the same. Um, many of us are starting to grow our own fruit trees, which is awesome, um, and doing a little permaculture. So, you know, being able to alter our diets to meet our body's needs can be life-changing. And the reason that I did a part two on this is because there was so much good information shared last week. And, uh, and again, on the replay, everybody was making comments. And I, I know I'm not alone in my illness. I, I have many friends that are dealing with Lyme and the byproducts of Lyme and different uh, viruses. <laughs> like I said, it's going to get crazy. I'm live. Want to come and say hello? I just came up to get potatoes. Of course you did. And eggs. And Your food, well, speaking of food. Fork. Oh, there's one over there in the corner. For, so, so I can plug oh, plug your fan in. Yeah. Say hello. Don't be so rude. Hi. <laughs> speaking of food, he is like oh, so boy. food based. I don't know. You'll have to look in the corner over there in your room. Or, there you go. That's there safe. it is. Okay, so. So this is safe to just plug in? Yeah. I guess. Don't blow up your camper. It has, a, it has a fuse built into the plug. Okay. So I don't know if that will... I don't know. You'll have to just try it. You shouldn't have a problem, though. You should be fine. If it, if it is too heavy for your solar system, it will. It may blow a fuse, but I think you're fine. I mean, on the, the plug itself, it's attached to the thing. 
Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. All right. Sorry for the distraction. He got a new fan yesterday because his camper is very hot and he, sorry, my battery is dying and I need to plug it into a source here. There we go. Okay. Um, so he was concerned about it blowing up his camper. Not really, but just having issues. Okay. Brenda says, I have managed my lupus with diet and herbs. Awesome. Awesome. That is it's so important that we recognize that our food is related to how we feel. And honestly, guys, if you would go cold turkey on all your processed foods and you would start to reintroduce yourself to whole vegetables and fruit and um, healthy meats, because keep in mind, guys, whatever the animal eats, you are eating also. Um, so if they're eating GMO feeds, then um, you're eating GMO also because it's in their meat, it's in their system. So it it is tricky. It's not an easy process, um, especially here in our local town. It's there's only very Austin. Can you let them out, please? Yeah. Thank you. Um, welcome to my world. <laughs> um, in our lo local town, it's very hard to find a lot of non-GMO things. They're getting better and they are introducing, you know, I can ask for things and if they can get it, they'll get it and, and keep it in the store. Keep in mind though, I'll just give you an example. A pack of eight hot dogs, non-GMO, I think they're Apple Gates, um, that I can get elsewhere for between five and seven dollars or nine fifty something at my local store. That's really hard to um, purchase those because that's really costly. But in order to get those products into a smaller area, it's going to cost money. So you got to find your resources. So yesterday, the Mountain Boy and I did a road trip um, over an hour away and did kind of a, we like to go and just do a big circle and hit everything in a circular motion so that we're heading in the town, doing our errands and heading right back out of the town. Of course, that took from 10 a.m. yesterday till 9 p.m. last night. So um, it's, it's usually a day affair, but we went there to get the things that we can get. So just as an example, one of our, our treats to ourselves is non-GMO potato chips on occasion or um, nachos and um, corn chips. And in our local store, they're three ninety nine a bag and an hour, over an hour away, they're only two little over $2 a bag. So it's really, you know, you really got to do your research. You really got to price around. Um, you can use some of the links below, such as Amazon Prime. Um, Thrive Market is a great resource. Um, the peanut butter that I can have, because peanut butter is one of those things, um, the peanuts grow under the ground, there's mold. Um, I got to be really careful with that stuff. And I couldn't figure out why I was getting so sick on all the other peanut butters. And finally found a non-GMO um, earth balance. It's a coconut uh, peanut butter. And then they also have the regular peanut butter. And um, I can pick that up for like $4 um, up in town, up in the bigger town. Can't find it here. Amazon, it's like $9 a jar. And I mean, they're only little, they're not big jars. So you really got to shop around. And now as I'm saying the pricing of things, it makes some people choke because it is a little bit more costly than your regular foods in the grocery store. But if you shop around, it's not that much more. Same with ketchup. Um, the non-GMO ketchups are no different in price than the regular ketchup. So why wouldn't you choose the better of the two, right? So that's really important is to really analyze your foods, really check, and make sure it has the non-GMO emblem and just doesn't say it's non-GMO. Because if it's not, it doesn't have the emblem, they're not certified. And I wouldn't trust it for anything because my life depends on it. I get so sick. So, you know, you really got to be careful, but I, I encourage you to nurture your body and your, and your illnesses through your food and, and good food. And one of the courses that we're going to be doing at the Academy is actually learning how to cook from scratch and, and eat from scratch and fill your pantry. And it'll be on these lines where I'm sharing the details of where to find the things, how to know how much to purchase, how much to grow, those kind of things. But it's really important because like Brenda said, she's been dealing with her lupus with diet and herbs and that's huge. And Brenda, I don't know 
I, I kind of, if I'm, if I'm right, um, you came over from YouTube, so you probably saw last week's video where I mentioned about the magnesium oil. Um, I know with lupus, uh, your tissue gets really swelled up and really gives you issues and a lot of pain, and the magnesium oil is really good at fighting that inflammation. Because last week, or the week before, my back was really swelled up that it felt like I was laying on inner tubes, uh, just the soft tissue. And um, the magnesium oil really, really helps and is very fast acting. So I wanted to share that with you. What is the cost compared to being sick and having medical bills? Yeah, there's no, there's, there's no comparison um, to being able to eat healthy and spend that extra money and, and you're, you don't have to go to the doctor. Up until me being sick, we haven't gone to a doctor out here. I don't have a doctor out here. Over the last eight years, I've had no need other than my, my illness and my surgery, but we found a doctor in Georgia. So I still don't have a family doctor here. I have no need. I typically don't have a need to go. We're really good at self-medicating and uh, the guys always say I have something for that regardless what it is that they've got going on. So we try to take care of ourselves before we go to hospitals or doctors. Um, and granted, like I said last week, there is always um, a time for Western medicine and a time for medical attention, um, like the mountain man um, stopping breathing eight times before the ambulance got here. There was nothing I could do for that. Um, he definitely needed medical care and... Um, you know, they could hardly get a pick line in him or an IV in him. So, you know, it's, hey, lay down, lay down. So it's really important, though, that you know the fine line there. There is definitely a line, you know, that when you do need medical care, um, but when you can take care of yourself, it is such an amazing thing. So I'm going to share a couple books with you guys. Oh, and Chad, in the description, are you need pepper? Yeah. It's in the cupboard. Where is it? In the pantry, left hand side. Um, in the uh, like third shelf up. It's in one of my little little jars. Not a canning jar, but the little Hoosier jars. Okay. Um, yes. No more interrupting. It's like a little kid. Well, if you can't see it, I'm I'll have to get it later for you. Okay. Um Okay, so he's cooking out in his camper on his uh, gas stove out there, so he needs refills every once in a while. Okay, so Chad, I was going to tell you down below. Oh, Chad said hello, Austin. Hi. <laughs> he says hello. Um, in the description, Chad, are the list of essential oils that are safe for children and how to utilize them. Uh, Mommy Potamus put a great post out, so rather than duplicate it, I'm just sharing it. Okay, I've got two messages here. I don't, oh, I can scroll it. Okay, bear with me. Uh, Brenda says, Doctor told me I would be crippled and in a wheelchair before I was 40. I am now 58 and get around better than I did in my 20s. You go, girl. That's what I like to hear. See, there are so many times, there's the hairy monger. Um, there are so many times where doctors say um, that there's nothing more I can do for you. Um, my friend Helen, who does my deep muscle therapy, is a perfect example. Many of the loggers out here are told that there is nothing more that, that can be done. And um, she she is able to assist them. So it's really amazing. Um, natural medicines, natural cures, they've been around for forever. They work. And, and our food, you know, if you think about it, there, there weren't, you know, these kind of sicknesses that we have today back in the day and that's because of all the toxins in our air in our food in our water you know there's so much crap and you can get like phobia ish I mean I won't drink city water I know that sounds crazy but I can't because the things in it make me sick and concussions for three days so it's really not worth it and when people offer me a drink or when I'm in a, a restaurant and they offer me a drink I'm really sketchy about taking it I always take my own water um, I'd rather get water out of a spring and boil it before I would take city water. So um, Jackie says, I am with you on doctors, etc. Some people are too quick to run to them. Oftentimes, yes, and another struggle is that your modern medicines stick in your system. So like antibiotics. When my daughter was little, we were in the... In the <laughs> ah, there we go. I thought I was going to disconnect completely on me. It was going too long. Okay. Um, 
Okay, I started saying, when my daughter was young, she and I were at the doctor's together because she would get me sick. Um, I was still involved in natural medicines. I've been involved medicine since I'm 14, but it's a lot easier to self-diagnose and to know your issues because you're in tune with your body than someone else's. Plus, um, this was all new to me. Um, she was the firstborn and her kids and other people, you know, she, so her whole first year of her life, the, every week, every other week, she and I were at the doctors. And what was happening is the antibiotics were getting, okay. It's doing a lot of spinning. I think there's too much smoke in the air. My internet's not working up on the mountain. I don't know. Okay, so antibiotics can get stuck in the system, therefore kind of clogging things and causing your immune system to have issues. So, you know, where the herbs and natural medicines don't do that. Now, you have to be careful with natural medicines, just like you do with prescription drugs, that you can overdo it. So, you know, too much of anything is not good. Um, so you always want to be cautious, but I want to share some really great books that I think you should have in your home. Um, and the links are down below. This is an old book. It's called Herbally Yours. And if you can find it, you're doing good. It's hard to come across, but occasionally on Amazon, it's on there. Sometimes it's pricey, but I'll tell you what, this is such a great, great book. It has the, um, ailment and then it also has the herbs, so there's a lot of cross-referencing in here, and this book has been a godsend, and it also, um, like, let me just look here and give you an example, okay, so, um, a urinary disorder, okay, it's, uh, blessed thistle, echinacea, corn silk, um, goldenrod, nettle, so it lists a whole bunch of these, and then it also puts in capital letters the ones that they more they recommend more over the others. It also has formulas and vitamins listed. The formulas they have in the back of the book where you can make your own formulas, and they are numbered. And then, so it cross-references those, and then it, it mentions the vitamins that are helpful for it. So I, I really feel that this book is like something everybody should have their hands on. Another really, really good one. And Rachel Weaver um, also has some more. She is Amish. Be your own doctor. Um, this is the uh, 101 stories. And this is the same kind of a book. Um, it has the ailments as well as the uh, cures. And um, it's all... it's apple cider vinegar, castor oil. Castor oil is... Oh, you have this one too? Isn't that a great book? Tammy, I absolutely love it. I'd be lost without it. It just has come in so handy. Um, but castor oil is a really good one. Um, my lymphatic system clogs. I did a video on lymphatic drainage that you can find on our YouTube channel. Um, it's really good also to clean your sinuses and drain your sinuses if you have a si uh, sinus infection. Um, oh, you have this one too. Yeah, good minds think alike. I love this book. Um, but I put castor oil on my feet. Castor oil is a, um, it draws. So um, I also have used castor packs on my liver and um, different organs. But you, um, the castor oil I put on my feet and it draws down. So that helps to keep my lymphatic system open. It was clogging. I don't know if it's because of silicone or if it's because of the biotoxins in my system, but I had a, I had a heck of a time with that for like two, two and a quarter years. I was, if I wouldn't have been going to hell and I would have been having some major issues, um, cause there was so much inflammation and swelling and it was just awful. Um, another book that I recommend is Modern Essentials. This is all on essential oils, um, and it does have a lot of the doTERRA oils in here um, referenced as well, but you will not find a more detailed book on all the oils um, with the scientific aspect of things in here as well as all the different um, oils you can use to heal certain things, um, how to use them, and I highly recommend that you don't use oils internally. If you listened last week, you heard me say that I dropped a one drop of lemongrass essential oil onto my keyboard, and it actually started melting my keyboard. Um, the oils are strong. They are very, they are very healing and very good for you. Um, good morning, Kimberly. But, um, you really need to heed caution with herbs and oils alike. You know, do your research, know your stuff, 
and, and use them with caution. And now I don't want to scare you from using them. There's a lot of great places. Um, also, um, the link is below to uh, the New England um, Herbal Academy. Uh, they are doing a free herbalist class. So if you haven't signed up, you can do so below, treyerwilderness.com slash herbalist. Um, the more educated you become, the more comfortable you will become. And the more good quality courses that you can take, such as New England's. I have taken several of their courses and they're amazing and I want to go through their whole gamut. It's costly when you start getting up into the bigger classes, but um, my health and my family's health is worth that to me, especially if we can avoid paying for doctors and medical bills. So glad I caught you live. I'm taking the free herb class. Love it. Awesome. And I'm glad you caught me live too. It's good to have you joining us. Uh, we have a good group of people that, and I want to just thank you all for taking the time because it's really awesome. I want you to know, and, and I'm sure you've seen it, that on Facebook I am not doing as good at keeping up with posting updates and things. Um, it's been a little crazy here with my health last week, but I will never stop doing this. This means so much to me too because I really enjoy getting to know you guys. I enjoy sharing my knowledge and I enjoy learning from you but this is a great platform because we can communicate back and forth so never hesitate to say something Rachel Weaver also has the backyard medicine and be your child's pediatrician recently released a second by your own doctor or be your own doctor yes she does have great great stuff and um, that's like I mentioned I knew she had other books this is the main one that I have the backyard medicine is on my list um, but she is so knowledgeable, and those books I really feel should be part of your arsenal. I have a lot of ebooks, but there are, are several books that I feel a hard copy is necessary. If anything were to ever happen and things were to fall apart, these books could really, really help you move forward. And that's the intention of everything we do here is to be prepared. Not that we're doom and gloom or, or expecting it, but that if things do fall apart, that we have ourselves set up in a way that we have everything we need to keep moving forward. Not that it would be easy, but that we'd have all the equipment and all the, the skills and the mindset to know what we need to do. And being healthy is part of that. And, you know, there are, there are ways in our world to cure cancer. Um... It's not always something that people want to be public. Um, it's not something that some people would choose to do. Um, but there are a lot of different treatments, some kind of uh, radical um, for natural treatments, um, using marijuana and different things. Um, but I, I do believe that God has put everything that we need to take care of ourselves directly in our environment. And the more we learn about how to forage and to dry and to utilize these things, the better. Um, making infusions, making um, uh, drying for teas, uh, dehydrating, uh, being able to grind and make different things. There's a great herbal coffee recipe uh, link below for herbal coffee. Um, I have had to eliminate... Uh, caffeine completely. I was doing a little bit of coffee because I enjoy it, but it's not worth it for me to be sick. So I have, even though I had found organic coffee, it's with the histamine, I can't. So sometimes we have to give up some of the things that we like. But you know what? At this point in my in the game for me, I don't even miss those things because I have my life back. I've gained my life back in my healing process. And I believe that everybody out there can heal just like, um, oh my goodness, I forgot your name, Brenda, um, is able was able to do with her lupus. Um, the, there are so many natural cures out there and many people are afraid to look past the medical system and, and the doctor's advice because I can guarantee you a doctor is not going to recommend that you try something natural. You have big pharma and big medicine and it's all about the money and the money that's being brought in. So I hate, I, I hate to say that, but that's how I see it. And um, like I said, there's a place for, for Western medicine, but if you can learn to heal your family and to make simple adjustments that can make your life 100% better, why wouldn't you? Here's a couple other books. I'll put links for these in the description later. Um, 
the Alchemy of Herbs. Uh, this is uh, Rosalie, and she is... Um, oh, I can't think of the network now that she's on a lot where her materials are shared. But she has some great materials. This is her book, but she's got a lot of courses. So I will share links in the description. I didn't have time to pull it together. I actually had to deliver a couch that I sold this morning. So I was kind of running a little bit. And yesterday we were on the road all day. This is another good one. And I think if you go to treyerwilderness.com slash survival doctor, you'll find this. Um, he is a great, uh, great doctor who is sharing his knowledge in a lot of different types of books. And he also has some courses. So this is another good one to have on hand. Um, this one actually talks about um, all kinds of different things that you can um work on like blood clots in your legs, that if there was no other care available to you, um, panic attacks, um, all kinds of um, really amazing things that go into detail on caring for emergencies. And I feel this is one that we need to have on hand too, um, how to check your pupils, um, how to apply traction, you know, it goes through the whole gamut and he really does some fantastic stuff. So I wanted, to, I would love for you to check him out. I will put his book later. And here's another one. People don't realize how powerful aromatherapy is with essential oils compared to, um, putting it on the body directly, um, Aromatherapy is a great way if you have children or um, elderly that and um, Young Living's Thieves is also really good. I also said about doTERRA's On Guard in case it cut me off. Um, those are really good to help get mold and um, just to kill mold, to kill bacteria in the air. And we were concerned that maybe we were having issues with mold. So um, we weren't sure where my issues were coming from. So having those diffusers running all the time is a real big plus. Good morning, Ashley. Hope you're doing good today, girl. Um, but those are some things that you can do and, and easily heal yourself. Um, if you have struggles sleeping, you can use a diffuser at night with, um, lavender. Um, also, um, oh, I can't think, uh, Balance is another good one. That's a doTERRA brand. Um, but there's a lot you can do, and these books will help guide you um, into learning the process and learning what you can and can't do. And also, like I said, uh, partaking in some of the classes, especially the free classes are, I mean, the more free knowledge that you can suck up, the better. And you know, often sometimes these people, I'm guilty of it, um, may have a free class that then is upselling a paid class. But you can gain so much information from the free classes. I can't afford to take classes right now that cost me money. But you better believe when there's free courses available that I can gain from, I am going to, I'm, I'm diving in because I want to know as much as I can. And I am a sponge for learning and I will be the first to admit that I don't know everything. I don't think there's anybody on this planet that knows everything. Um, but the more we can, we can learn, and especially from good quality people, like I said, the New England Herbal Academy. Academy is one that I highly recommend. They do amazing stuff, and I've been very pleased with the classes I've taken, and they're very organized. So um, that is a great way to go, and they've got a lot of free things that have been happening this year. So don't miss out on those. Um, and I'm glad Ashley's here. Ashley, thank you so much for sharing Dancing with the Elephants. That was a great book. I'm still, I'm not 100% finished with it, but what a great read. Um, Ashley had shared last week about that one, and also, um, is it The Promise of Now that you shared also? I'm trying to think if that's what it was. Um, anyway, maybe she'll chime in and share that with me. Um, but the two books that she shared were really, really good books um, for those of you that are out there that are struggling in a place, whether it's, um, this, this is more with a, um, a medical issue, but it could pertain to even to your, um, financial situations where you are in a situation where you are, um, you've got so many weights on your shoulder. Life has changed and altered in such a big way that 
everything around you is new and different and, and you're just feeling lost in the place that you're at, um, it would be a good read because one of the things that I thought was really cool that he talked about, and I've been doing this for three years, is celebrating, celebrating everything, celebrating baby steps, celebrating huge progress. When we sell this house, we are going to celebrate. We are going to celebrate here. I'm going to celebrate with you. Um, lots of celebrating is going to go on. And as Aha, we're back. Sorry, it was spinning. Um, we, we are celebrating everything. If you can learn to celebrate your small blessings in disguise, and um, sometimes they're pretty big ones too, but sometimes we're in such a place where we don't see them. The Power of Now is the other name of the book. It's driving me crazy. While I was spinning, I decided to look. If you guys are interested in checking out those books, the links are not below, but you can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash dancing with elephants. And the other one is treyerwilderness.com slash the power of now. Um, and thank you again, Ashley, for sharing those. I'm, I'm anxious to read the power of now. One of the big things is you hear a lot of people saying to improve, you know, do a lot of self help and to a uh, self improvement. And, I think that that is a really good thing that we can always be growing on and always improving ourselves, always. Um, I think we're guided. Uh, Ashley and I talked about it last week a little bit where um, I feel that through my healing process, things were me, whether it was people, books, movies, whatever the case may be, I felt that they were like implanted into my 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 circumstance and um that's a really neat feeling and a really powerful thing when you are guided to the next level whether it's in your healing whether it's in in your uh business um i've had that with my business too where um things that i'm sorry guys that it's cutting out like this today this is crazy but um i really wanted to touch back on resting in your circumstances and, and being content and finding peace in your circumstances. Because, for one, we talked about food being a huge role player in our healing and our health. Well, so is stress. And so is worry. And, and so is discontentment. And when you can look past those things and just learn to accept where you are and what's going on, that can make such a big, big difference. Sorry, internet wasn't working. Keeps glitching, so I'm catching up and a little behind. And yes, that got the title already. Yes, the power of now. Okay, thanks, Ashley. And yeah, I keep cutting in and out today, too, for some reason. So I think we have too much smoke in the air. <laughs> but I know it's a hard thing to fathom. And what was really unique about Dancing with Elephants is the man... The man knew he was going to get this life-altering and, and eventually um, an, an, an illness that was going to kill him. Um, it was genetic. And, you know, when we hit those places, we can sit there and stew and just be miserable. Or we can learn to progress through it. You know, I really feel... And I know this is a crazy thought, but I feel that God puts us where we are and the circumstances that we go through for a reason, for growth, to be able to help others, and um, it's, it's just, I know while I was healing, Ashley helped me quite a few times, just in messaging me. Um, but she also, she's really good in natural medicines also. So she had shared some things with me that were very helpful in the process. So she's been one of my angels and I've been reached out to by many people through my journey when I didn't feel like I was helping anybody to find that I really touched people. And sometimes in our journeys, we will touch people and never, ever know and, you know, there's people always watching and, you know, whether it's at church or at your work or whatever, but how we handle things in our lives may help others handle things in their lives. And it's kind of like that um, trickle down effect. 
um, or ripple effect, if you will, you know, that we are able to progressively help others to help others. Um, just like the shingles reference that I shared with you guys last week, you know, that was something that was shared with me and I want to pass it on to you. But when we are in a position where people know that our life is less than optimal and that we're in a position where, you know, we could be really miserable, but we are constantly um, seeing the shiny side of the penny, being happy, um, being productive in ways that we weren't before. So when you're flat on your back and you can still use your hands, you can knit, you can write. I penned my book. I thought of it yesterday when we were traveling, which was kind of a neat thought. You know, I was flat on my back for most of 2016. And I published my book January 10th, which was my birthday. That was my goal of 2017. Um, so although I was flat on my back, my hands still worked. My mind still worked. And I, I needed to use that time wisely. But the thing is, too, guys, resting is not a bad thing. We talked about taking naps last week. And... Um, I want to expand on that a little bit. You don't necessarily have to take a nap to have a healthy um, boost to your body and to your day. You can just simply sit and close your eyes and just rest. Meditation is huge. Um, I know Ashley and I have both um, taken part in huge amounts of that while we were um, flat on our backs and unable to do things. Um, you know, God wants a relationship, and I know that many of you that have followed have been following me know that I share my my feelings on um, Christianity and how God has really um, just taken over me, and it's an amazing thing. But God, God wants us to be in relationship. He wants us to pull into him. He wants us to go to him. No different than our biological fathers on earth. It's no different. It's the same. It's really the same concept in that you have that person to go to when you're struggling, when you're hurting and, and pulling into him and praying to him and, um, staying in a Bible verse that is really empowering you or speaking to you. You know, I I spend so much of my days in meditation, whether it's when I'm walking and yes, I'm still having to pay four dogs and make sure there aren't any coyotes coming in and all that stuff. But I'm in tune. I'm in tune with him. And, you know, I've told you guys before, I spend a whole hour some days, um, sometimes even more than that, that's how I start my day with God. So it's through devotionals, through reading his word, um, praying, but I, I feel so fulfilled and that I know has improved my health. And in addition to it, improving my health, my walk is closer. Ah, that thing is crazy. You know what I think happened today? When I went outside, I picked up our outside router. We have a router outside that goes down to the cabin and when I come in, the tin blocks that router to have, I don't know, either that or the enemy is just fighting me again. Because when I have good stuff to share, he always kicks in <laughs> and I end up spinning forever. But really, guys, um, meditation is huge. And I don't remember the woman's name that joined last week, but she said that, um, I think her name was Rhonda. Um, when she uh, is at work, she can't take a nap. But at lunch... Um, she could take five minutes to just close her eyes and sadly set a timer on her phone, um, you know, so that she doesn't go back to work late or get in trouble. And I will say this, my phone has such a nice relaxing, I'll have to write, write it down and share it with you next week. We get up to this alarm and it's a very progressive, slow sounding, nice alarm. And I'll tell you what. I have never woken up in all my 48 years that I didn't feel like I was in a panic until I found this this alarm sound. It's just so progressive and it makes you wake up with a smile and just kind of, it's kind of like a ah, kind of sound versus that, you know, I have one of those on mine too. Just that's, that's used for other things. But it's, it's nice when you can find those things. We have resources. We can incorporate technology into our days. So 
take a five minute break. And she said, you know, she pays bills and does things on her lunch. And we all do. But as Ashley and I both mentioned last week, it's hard to separate from feeling the panic and the need to do, to do stuff. You know, our lunches are never spent just eating and relaxing and meditating. It's like doing five million things because if we don't do it at lunch, you'll have to do it after work or whatever the case may be. So I get that. I'm in a scurry sometimes too. But if we can learn to shut off those things, you know, I, I follow a lady, she runs a million dollar business. Now listen to this. She runs a million dollar business and yes, she has help, but she is very involved and very active in her business and she only works five hours a week. And the reason she does that and can do that is because when she gets into her office, she devotes non-distracted time to those five hours and can accomplish a lot. When I leave my homestead and I work in the coffee shop, I was doing that last year, I could get three days worth of work done in like half a day sitting at the coffee shop. When we focus our energy on doing the tasks at hand instead of being distracted, we will have so much more time in our lives to slow things down and to, to do the things we enjoy and to be at a pace that is healthy for us. And that's what I want to encourage you guys to do is learning how to focus your time productively. And, and not, I mean, like I can go in my office right now. I've got, we moved the couch out of the other room and everything got dumped in my office. I work best when there's nothing around me. And you know what? I'm going to the coffee shop today. <laughs> I have to go to town for some tests. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to spend the day away from dogs that are in heat and shedding all over the house and, and stuff being all over. And I'm going to sit in the coffee shop and just work on what needs to get done. And then tomorrow, I won't have to worry about any of it. Ashley says, oh, yes. I want to the name of that alarm. I dread naps if I need to wake up at a certain time because alarms always trigger surprise and the nausea. I found one that's tolerable now that my nerve system is more settled, but I'd love to know the name of the one you like. I will share that with you because I totally get that. And the mountain man, like the alarm goes off and it's just like for him, it's like, a, you know, where now he even admitted that although it's like a tinkly little, you know, it's a girly, uh, uh, earthy kind of and he might say hippie-ish sound, he, he likes it because for that reason, it wakes you, it comes on so slow and so light and progresses in sound that it's just, it wakes you in such a huh, refreshing way. I can't, you know, that, I know I did that before, but that's what it feels like. So yes, Ashley, I will definitely share that because of all the sounds that they provide with you, your iPhones and stuff, um, they've always been obnoxious and this one is really nice and it is on the iPhone. So I don't know if you have the iPhone or if you can find it something similar, um, but it's so nice when you can do that and I totally get the triggers. And, and that's the thing, guys, you know, just like Ashley, she's, she wants to change things and that's what we need to do. A lot of times... We want things, but the thing is, how bad do you want it? This poor girl would get so sick and in so much pain and nausea that she'd end up in the ER and passing out. So she wants, she wants to have that peace. And the thing is, we all go through life really crazy. I just want to ask you today to think about it. How bad do you want a better life? How bad do you want the peace back in your life, the joy back in your life? How bad do you want to rest in the area that you're in, in your circumstances, whether it's health, financial, marriage, whatever it is? We need to ask ourselves, how bad do we want to make things better? And, and, and you can do that. You can make things better. And you can embrace new things. It's making new habits. Um, me getting up and reading my, my Bible and my devotionals for an hour was not something I did all my life. But I'll tell you what, it's something that I crave. And when I can't do it, like yesterday we didn't do it. So today I'm like absorbing so much more because we were on the road all day. And although we were listening to Christian music, ooh, sorry, I just stuck my thumb in front of the camera. Um... Okay, Ashley said some more. I knew something happened, but I couldn't see what it was on the screen. Um, but, you know, we were listening to Christian music. We had a really good day, but it's just not the same. There's something, it's just like having a really good friend. And um, 
when when you're on your back and you're struggling and there's things you can't do and you know you no longer can can walk or run or do the things you used to do you can um start learning new things start doing new things start trying new things you know maybe you can paint uh, maybe you can sing there's so many things that we can attempt to do it's just a matter of changing our mindset and learning that maybe we can no longer do that and yes you have to mourn the loss of things sometimes I had to mourn the loss of being able to function and being able to think and being able to hold conversations did you need something <laughs> You're just harassing me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, you may have to mourn the loss of things sometimes, but through that mourning of, and, and the loss of things, there's new creation if we allow it. So that's what I want to encourage you to do is to allow, you know, newness in your life and allow change. Change is a hard thing, but it can be, it's really positive. I think, I think change is so positive. Ashley says there is a reason... Morning rain, birds, and other sounds are gentle, I think. I think our bodies are designed to wake up gently. I totally agree. I totally agree. And making our own our own schedules and our own pace is something, you know, and if you have to work out of the home, you know, you can't change your work hours or your work day um, unless you have a very, very um, uh, flexible boss. Um but because I'm my boss, I am choosing to make things flexible. Um, but you can make flexible your lunch. You can make flexible the rest of your day. You can make, you know, you can you can make the rest of your time what it is. You just have to learn to be really focused. Um, okay, yeah. And Tammy agreed also. Yeah, I, uh, you know, you got to think back in, on the way things were created and on the way things began, and and you can really see. You know, there was reason for everything. Now, the advancements that we have, you know, because of all the people and the brilliance, you know, there's a lot of great things that have been incorporated. You know, technology is not a bad thing. It just gets misused or overused. But there's a lot of benefits to the things around us. This thing right here, as much as I tried not to go that direction and I thought reading off of a machine was ridiculous, it has been life-saving because I didn't get beat to death because I used to sleep with a headlamp on my head and I would read a book because I liked the feel of a paper book in my hand. But every time the mountain man would turn, I would look and I would blind him. So I, I didn't get beat to death and I now have a machine that I can read at night and I can change it down to the um, better lighting and I, I know the blue lighting isn't good for me but I also know that I can't always fall asleep and it does put me to sleep. It's amazing I don't have bruises and scars from it bouncing off of my head at night when I do fall asleep while reading. But I also get to, in, in um, this is my chance to read, so um, I enjoy it, and that's something I do. But guys, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Also, um, you know, share in regard to illness, um, being able to rest, uh, anything that we've talked about today. If you didn't get a chance to chime in, and you'd like to, and if you're watching the replay, please don't hesitate to message. I, I check the messages, I see them, and I respond to them, and I really enjoy the communication with you guys. I also wanted to put it out there. September is preparedness month and you all know that I focus very heavily on preparedness and just being uh, able to accomplish everything I accomplish now in my home if, if things were to fall apart and being prepared for natural disasters and, and the unexpected and, and being able to um, utilize the outdoors and be prepared with wilderness survival. All those things are things we practice here, and I want to share as much as I can um, all the time with you guys, but since September is Preparedness Month, let's focus it. Share with me the things that you would like to learn more about so that I can uh, kind of tune in to what your needs are, and if there are certain areas that you struggle or certain areas you feel you need to improve in, um, let me know. It would be my pleasure to focus the these um, Facebook lives uh, to how they can best accommodate you guys and I don't want to take any more of your time since it's been spinning and spinning but feel free to leave those things in the comments here and if I pop off before you get a chance to ask a question or share something I'll, I'll message you um, later on but I'm gonna quick say a prayer 
Dear Lord, I just thank you for today. I want you to bless all of these wonderful people that take time out of their day to join me. I'd also like you to bless those that have joined after the fact. Bless those that are in need, that are having health issues and are struggling to find peace in their new place. Uh, be with those that are struggling with um, financial or marriage issues or maybe a special needs child. Whatever the case may be, Lord, I just ask that you wrap your arms around them and help them to find the peace that I live in, that they can enjoy it too because there's such an amazing, amazing place. It's such an amazing place to be. And Lord, I just ask that you show yourself and, and show, let them feel your loving arms in their lives and, and, and see your blessings daily. And Lord, I just ask that you uh, help each of these people to enjoy their days, to, uh, if they are trying to learn new things and to create new habits, help them to be successful so that they can find balance and joy back in their lives. And Lord, I just thank you for each and every one of them, and I just ask that you love on them and, and keep them safe till our next visit. And Lord, I just ask this in your holy and precious Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Oh, thank you, Chad. God bless you too, and I hope you feel better. And uh, everybody stay safe uh, with the fires and the different things that are going on across the country. I know that the back east, there was a lot of flooding. Uh, so just be safe. Be aware of your surroundings. Uh, make sure if you are in a fire area that you use the links below to make sure whether there's fires too close to you that you need to be on alert and, and more prepared than normal. And uh, guys, just thanks for joining me. And always, never hesitate in sharing your two cents. Um, maybe oh, goodness, it keeps spinning. While I'm sitting here waiting for it to come back on, I wanted to share something with you guys. You know how on um, the other week when I was talking about being inspired uh, to, to, with creativity and I showed you my baby bracelet with the little heart, the turquoise heart on it? I had to go to the jewelers yesterday. Um, uh, we were selling a couple things. And I... I asked if they would be able to turn that baby bracelet into a ring for my middle finger. And sure enough, they can. They can do it for 25 uh, to make it an open ring or an enclosed ring would be 60. So I was like totally excited about it.